In this session, we're going to look at this retaining wall example and the new trilinear soil joint that's been added into version 15. The example is from our examples manual and it's this embedded retaining wall model. If we look at the picture down below, we have a retaining wall passing through two strata. We have a loose sand and a dense sand. We have an excavated area and a retained area. Now if we go back to the model, have a look at the attributes. We have beam elements representing the retaining wall and we have joint elements representing the soil behind and in front of the retaining wall. If we look at the low case tab, we have two low cases. Low case one is the initial conditions, the at rest. Low case two is a prop force at the top of the wall. Now if we go back and look at the soil joint properties, we have three soil attributes. One for the loose sand behind the wall, one for the dense sand behind the wall, and one for the dense sand in front of the wall. Now if we look at the properties, to start with we have a surcharge of 10 that represents the overburden behind the wall here, and we have a unit weight of 12. Now these are used to define the vertical stresses which increase with depth. The lateral earth pressures are assumed to lie between the passive and active limits, which are calculated using the formula shown. However, where the movements of the wall are insufficient to mobilise the limiting pressures, an intermediate pressure will occur. This is based on this trilinear relationship, where the slope is the horizontal modulus of subgrade reaction. If at rest pressures are assumed on both sides of the retaining wall, then they cannot be in equilibrium. As the wall deflects forward, the pressure behind will decrease towards the active limit and the pressure in the front will increase towards the passive limit. Depending on the stiffness of the soil in the structure, the limits may or may not be reached. However, starting with joints that are effectively preloaded with at rest pressure is crucial to soil structure interaction analysis such as this. So let's have a look at the results from this analysis. What we're looking at here is the at rest case and you can see that we have a deflected profile and a bending moment diagram being drawn. Now if we set active the second load case we can look at the effects of the increasing prop force on the retaining wall. Now in this analysis at the moment we are using the best estimate soil properties now you might want to do a parametric study and look at some lower bound properties, so that's what we're going to do. Now to start with, I'm going to close the results down and I'm going to copy analysis 1 by holding the control key down and dragging this down. I'm going to rename this copy to be analysis 2 lower bound, so I'm going to use some lower bound soil properties. To create the lower bound soil properties, I'm going to use the existing attributes. Now I'm editing the loose sand, I'm going to enter lower bound into the name, and I'm going to change this value here, B. Now at the moment, the modulus of subgrade reaction has been taken to increase linearly with depth. Now B is the constant of proportionality, so I'm going to change this from 250 to be 50. And I'm going to repeat this on each of the soil attributes in turn. So I'm going to select the second attribute, change the B value to 50, add a lower bound to the attribute name. Once I've done that, OK. Select the third attribute, add the name lower bound, change the B value to be 50. OK, so I've now got these new soil properties. I now need to add these to analysis 2. Now the easiest way of doing this is to use the existing assignments. So right hand mouse button, select assignments. I can drag on the new property, making sure it goes into the second analysis. I'm just going to repeat this for the other attributes. Again, making sure that it goes into analysis 2. And finally, the last attribute onto the model, again making sure it goes into analysis 2. I can now solve this second analysis 
and I can look at the results. Now, if I look at the first analysis, what we're seeing is the deflected shape and the bending moment diagram. I can compare this directly with the second analysis to look at the difference between the different soil properties that I'm using in this analysis. Now, what I'm actually going to do is create a basic combination of the last increment from analysis one and the last increment from analysis two and I'm going to give them factors of 1 and minus 1 and what that will do is subtract one from the other so I can see the difference between the two analyses in terms of the bending moment diagram so this is the difference between analysis 1 and analysis 2